Good evening everyone, this is Harry from Hasbro TV here. And yeah, I'm here to do a very quick video to talk about Poro. I'm kind of sick of hearing his name right now, to be honest with you. It's been 30 days and Poro still isn't on Hotspur for player. Now, of course, we've had different reports today. We've heard, number one, Spurs weren't willing to pay an administration fee of £2.5 million, which sounds a bit ridiculous to me because that's like peanuts in today's market. So... How can you not play two on two point five million pounds? Then we heard that release was apparently expired, and then I get to, got told by someone it it does not active. So like, who do you believe? I don't really know. But so I, as far as I'm concerned, Poro probably cost about forty ish to fifty million at the very most. Yeah, but let's just put that transfer fee aside for a second. We are thirty days into the transfer window. Deadline day is tomorrow, and we're still chasing a player we could have got on January the first. Right wing back is apparently one of our most important positions in the, the Conte system, right? Or any in any system. We have Emerson, Doherty, and Spence, who obviously Conte doesn't even either want. But we're still negotiating for a player we needed like 30 days ago. We've lost to Arsenal. We've lost to City. So there's six points dropped already because, we're again, we're leaving it late. And for, in my opinion, I think Porro would have played both of the games if he was here. And how... It's Groundhog Day, basically. What is a Groundhog Day? If you guys remember the Dybala deal, there was like the image rights rubbish. You had Moutinho, who, if you guys remember, under AVB, he was we were negotiating. We finally apparently agreed the fee on deadline day for 29 million to 30 million, somewhere around that mark. But again, we couldn't get over the line because of like leaving it late. You had the Greedish deal where we offered <laughs> 5 million plus Josh Onoma when he's a villa. And then. We got up to like 20 million and they wanted 25, something ridiculous. Like, we're talking 5 million difference, which is practically nothing. Uh, Sadio Mane, he came to Tottenham Hotspur's training ground. He basically agreed to join Spurs, but Levy wouldn't pay his wages. Again, another player we missed out on. But this deal is it's just, honestly, I'm actually bored of hearing about Poro. Like, this deal should have been done ages ago. We should have rocked up on January the first and heard on New Year's Day Spurs announced deal for Pedro Porro but no we have to sit there and negotiate over like 2 million 5 million peanuts in today's market right we're not talking about 5 million back in like the 1990s or even further back than that where 5 million was like a big thing Spurs generate record revenues each year and this is probably why they're delaying the financial results because let's be honest people are going to go ballistic when they see that including me because it's going to show us making like 200 million or something crazy like that profit from the season and then it's just how is Poro not a Tottenham Hotspur player it's just honestly I actually think it's actually insane and it's just I'm watching the same st stuff every single window and how people cannot understand that Levy and the board are the problem I just I, can't, I cannot understand it I still can't get my head around it it's just it's unbelievable honestly it's unbelievable <laughs> it's actually unbelievable Poro should be a Tottenham Hotspur player by now. He should, like I said, he should have joined them like within the first week of the window. Fifty-nine million, or no, fifty-nine, thirty-nine, forty million is actually not a lot in today's market. Players are going for like fifty, sixty. You look at Arsenal bidding seventy million for Caicedo. Poro for forty million is actually cheap. It's actually a cheap, a cheap deal in today's market. So why are we sitting there haggling over like a few million over that administration fee? Or either not playing this release course, which was 39 million, which again, like I said, 40 million is like nothing in today's market. Let's be like brutally honest, it's literally nothing. And there's people on Twitter saying it's not the board's fault. Well, it kind of is because we do this every single transfer window, every single season, and we leave things late. If if we had any football intelligence, right, at the at the top at the boards, we would have got on the deal early. So at least Sporting now are not sitting there. And like people quote moving the goalposts or whatever was reported by David Ornstein, which nothing, there is no disrespect to David, right? It's nothing against you. But even if they did do that, it's because they know late in the window they're going to find a replacement. So why are we still here? Like I said, what, this, this isn't a reality we should be living in, where Spurs are still negotiating 40 million in this market for a player who reportedly Conte wants really badly in a position we badly need a right wing back. A player we'd actually, but all of us have seen play play against us and looks better than every single wing wing back we probably have. And we're still here. It's January the thirtieth, right? The deadline day is tomorrow at eleven o'clock. We have exactly so it's six thirty now. So we've got to, 
how many hours? Let's say let's round it up to seven o'clock. We have twenty eight hours to do the deal. To get it over the line, to put it through the fax machine, whatever else they have to do. I know they sometimes they get like a little like extra hour sometimes, but forget that because Pedro Porro, like Jack Grealish, like Bruno Fernandes, like all these other players were prepared. He was all ready to come and come to Spurs. But look, it's just, like I, I would say this, it's like Groundhog Day at Tottenham again. And people should not be surprised by this because it happens every single window. And especially in this scenario we're in under, with, under Conte, I think it's actually disgraceful that we're still sitting here negotiating to try and get Poro. I think it's actually bloody disgraceful. If you want to keep Conte at Spurs, you need to back him, right? So why are we still sitting here 30 days into the window and we still haven't backed him? And don't tell me Dan Juma because Dan Juma is just like a squad filler because Gil's going out on loan back to Seville, who we actually signed from, and still have Lamella. So yeah, can someone explain that to me? I don't understand it. I mean, if Lucas leaves, maybe we'll need another attacker, but we've, like I said, we've got... 28 hours until the window closes. I believe he's living off his Van der Vaart deal, which was like, what, 12 years ago now? I think, 12, yeah, 10, 12, 13 years ago now? Yeah, 12, 13 years ago now. And it's like, what he doesn't understand and what the board don't understand is leaving things late actually is worse because it means the selling club won't want to sell the player if they can't find a replacement. And not only that, people have clocked onto what Levy does. He, you're going to sit there haggling over two mil, mate, five mil, mate. You're not going to get the player. You end up pissing off the club. And the whole goalpost quote wouldn't surprise me because Levy actually moved the goalpost with Bruno Fernandes when he tried to sign him. So now Sporting just doing the same that we did to them. And that's all down to Levy and the board because who they've been here for 22 years. Who else is going to be the problem? And now I hear Levy's personally doing the deal now. So maybe he was doing it in the background initially or something. And that actually makes me less confident the deal's going to happen because he'll probably sit there haggling over like 500k, for all I know. So Poro should be a Tottenham Hotspur player, but he's not. And leave it out. 